So I have some really cool glue and bolts that I want to tell you about before we stick them in the rock and you can't tell what they are anymore. Over two years ago, my friend hit me up from Jordan and was asking me about bolts and he needed them. And so let me have him explain that to you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Aboud from Jordan. Having bolts was very hard to get. First of all, it was very expensive. Second, getting long bolts wasn't easy. Getting bolts in general wasn't easy because you have to ship them, then you have to pay tax and customs and all this. Getting bolts is very hard, especially getting the long ones. So I decided to make this. What I appreciated about him trying to solve that problem is he was trying to make the highest quality bolts he could at an affordable price. They're welded on the backside like a Romer bolt. I like how he has them stamped on the top. These are called junipers. He has 25 kilonewtons on here. It's a 316L stainless steel and it's got grooves all the way down the shaft. I'm gonna squirt out some of my liquid rock 500 to make sure that it's properly mixed. So this first squirt is probably not gonna be a mixed amount. That's too black for what I'm used to seeing. Bummer to waste it, but you like that's not gonna cure. Yeah, that's a better color. Man, cold glue just does not come out the same as warm glue. I'm only filling it up about three quarters of the way because by the time I put a bolt in there, it all comes out for the most part. One trick I like to do is to have like Q-tips or something with me to where I like I can clean off the actual bolt. Uh, if this is going to be a, like a thing everyone's going to use and see instead of having all this excess crap on there. It's going to get hard and sharp. Yeah, it's hard and sharp as sandy, but like it probably wear off over time. But like, it's just like, I try to make it cosmetically look just as good as I try to make it as, just as like safe. Put this in last night and the glue is cured. The first squeeze did not, the, uh, the remainder did. So like, I know that what's in here is cured. Soft shackles lead to a bigger soft shackle, which lead to this span set that we keep adjusting the size. In this case, we did kind of a triple wrap in order to make it short enough to reach this bolt, or we can fully extend it to reach some other bolts over there. This is uh, the slower downer or the decelerator. And this keeps some of this from flying. Now what's nice about soft shackles is they're not uh, heavy. So the only thing it's got to catch is this one shackle. This load cell doesn't have a screen, but it has a cable coming out. And it was just going to go to a laptop, giving us, um, for the first time in Bolt Busters, a graph uh, and the number. So I'm pretty excited about having this. It's a 20,000 pound load cell. This is a soft release. So if you ever have, if you ever, for some reason, get inspired to do this, you want to keep the hydraulic or the pulley system from flying this way as soon as that releases. And so this is wrapped around the tie rods on our uh, BFH. See, our big fat hydraulic cylinder. Over here we have our hydraulic pump, the kind of thing that you put on the back of like a dump truck. Uh, and, and it runs off DC power, which just gives us a lot of flexibility to do stuff in a mine. Now the anchor over here is pretty interesting because it kept coming out, usually concrete screws, the Titan HD Simpson concrete screws are bomber. It's one of the strongest bolts we just use and they're so easy to remove when we're done. And so we like to use those to hold down the hydraulic. But in this limestone, it would keep coming out. So instead of having them in tension, we put them in shear and we had to rearrange things to have a five point, uh, five point anchor. To be fair, this is choss that's been blasted over and over. Uh, so not all limestones is bad, but not all granite is great. So it's not just, if you know you have a rock type, you can just do whatever. Um, there's so many variables, but that's cool about bolt busters is that when we test stuff, we kind of just learn how things break. And so you can more easily identify what things might do in your context. Let's pull something. I'm impressed. 41.53 and this well doesn't even look bothered by it. That's a 25 kilonewton rating on it. You can see here that epoxy doesn't like to stick to metal. And so it kind of comes out and these grooves are very important to grab and keep it in the rock. And obviously it did at 41.5 kilonewtons. So it broke the rock all around this in the direction that we were pulling. Uh, this seems to be fractured up in here. I think this is still gonna be a solid placement for our next test. Oh, this is a cool result. So it looks like it was compromised at the first cut for the glue here. The, the notches. The first notch, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Albeit pretty high, but... Yeah, above MBS, but when I was looking at this earlier, I was like, these look like they're like uh, cut, machined into there, and that could be a possible 
um, failure point. So it didn't break until the rock failed. So what happened was it was like being pulled so much more than it would if there was rock in front of it. The bolt is still in that hole. 32.2 kilonewtons and like the rock kind of did its thing and then the bolt? That's an interesting graph. Damn it. I mean, this rock looks compromised. Literally, this bolt's not even moved. 44, this bolt in good rock isn't even showing signs that we've pulled on it. What broke? Oh, shit. Where was this? Uh, I think it was like right there. Well, we lost a shackle pin, flew out of the rock, and I found it. It's all the way in the back of this mine. You were digging down there. Yeah. That's crazy, man. 54, and this bolt is still bomber. 54.23. Okay, we were successful. Let me show you how I built this anchor. So, this is called cascading sliding X's. At least that's what I call it. Where you have like a sliding X and a sliding X to another sliding X, which this goes to another sliding X, which goes to another sliding X. <laughs> And then this is kind of loose, and that's kind of the catch it in case like it broke. I don't want it to go flying forward. Six main bolts here is doing the most of the work. And we laid the hydraulic sideways so the hoses aren't gonna like fall the wrong way and pull the pump weird. How you guys doing? Ready for the next ones? Yep. So I'm adding the brake test from this video into the bolting Bible, but sometimes I make updates in that that aren't relevant to a recent video. And the email updates that I send out every week are really helpful for letting people know what I'm up to. For example, I might be doing something special and I go into the details of that in the email. I'm also brake testing giveaways. Mr. Linescale just let me give away a Linescale 3 to someone in our email list. And now Rocky is letting me give away two Rocky Talkies. All you have to do to enter to win is open your emails and we'll pick from those who did at the end of August. And then next month, we'll be giving away some more stuff. Now let's pull these in tension. Did it really not break the bolt? Wow, that weld is bomber. Well, what's it ready to? 25. <laughs> 52.26. 40. 40. Same bolt, same result. Pulled out. These things got a great pullout game. Some beautiful B-roll for you guys to see that it's still a bolt. 44.69. Three for three. They all pulled out. Yeah, I mean, they all looked the same. They all pulled out the same. 2.14. Here's an interesting backstory of this. Aboot hit me up almost two years before he was able to send me these in order to test. Now, manufacturers are really hard to get to work with you if you're doing small batches of anything, whether that's making quality ropes or quality bolts. It's very hard to make climbing gear if you're not a giant corporation, but he wanted to make them very good enough. And so he spent a lot of time figuring out how to do that. And the rest of this video is him sharing his story of what went into all these decisions of something that looks relatively simple. So I think his story is actually very valuable because all you see is this in the rock, you clip to it, you trust your life to it, and you don't often think much behind what went into this. Now, I think it's important to figure out who's actively bolting in the areas you frequent and help support them because it costs a lot of money to do that and it doesn't happen by itself. It could be a bolting fund. It could be just a single person. Maybe hit them up and spot them 20 bucks and chip in because if everybody does that, we'll have better bolts. Oftentimes when resources are limited, cheaper things go in and sometimes they're not the right things. This ended up being a really nice bolt and I'm gonna let him share the story of what went into that. Manufacturers are not so excited to make them because in the end, you don't make money with this. To find the right person to make it for you with the quality you desire, with a standard, with something I would call professional. Going through this, I did not have any any information how to make it. Hot bend, cold bend, to weld, not to weld, to fold, not to fold, to this, not to that. I tried MMA, 
I tried make thick stick in the end thick welding was the way to go you control uh, contamination it's very precise and very strong and I went to another manufacturer he did hot bending he did this for me it was amazing but it wasn't sustainable because each bolt took around four hours of work two people need to work with it one with a torch one to bend after you finish it's black you have to polish a lot a lot of work but the downsides as well were too much heat on stainless steel it might uh, lose the anti-corrosion resistance let us know experts i'm not an expert the bigger the eye the longer the shaft you have to do because it creates a lot of lever effect in the end i did this juniper juniper is a very famous tree in jordan it's 12 centimeters 11 and a half ish 10 millimeters uh, thank you ryan jinx for testing that and make it happen ryan jinx was walking with me the whole journey from day one he knows a lot how much i work on that it's with double ring full chain this one come down to ten dollars each at least it's available in jordan we have a lot of rock to be bolted here come to jordan if you really know how to bolt you're an expert come help me <laughs> we have a lot of rock to be bolted a lot of roots a lot of potential so yes i can ship worldwide but i haven't tried yet at least i ship in the neighboring uh, countries this is made up to now to en uh, standards with all specifications with all testing methods so it is a quality bolt 316l uh, i do also 34l with all types depends on the environment of you're using thank you very much for watching thank you ryan jinx come to jordan we have a lot of canyons a lot of rock a lot of trad climbing as well assalamu alaikum thank you very much